Yep, it's kind of the reaction I was expecting. <laughs> I recently done a video talking about the news that Sony slash Crunchyroll has bought Right Stuff as a distribution company. It seems like still at this point, a lot of question marks are up in the air about if they're buying all their brand labels as well, their publishing labels such as Nozomi Entertainment, Critical Mass. But I do believe that a lot of the reaction is warranted and obviously brings up a lot of questions. So I want to do a follow-up video talking about my opinions on a certain amount of subjects that's been coming up, discussions I've been having with certain people. There's quite a few people that I have some direct messages going to that are talking about their concerns about this whole buyout. And I believe a lot of that is warranted. Just like a lot of the response on Twitter and social media, again, is very warranted. If you look at, obviously, Nozomi Entertainment's announcement, if you look at Right Stuff Anime's Twitter announcement, it's nothing but negativity in the responses. And it really does beg the question of what people believe that Right Stuff could respond with. It seems like Sean Kleckner himself is being very quiet. <laughs> I think he li literally the only thing he's done since the announcement is retweet Anime News Network's post about it. Everything else, he is completely silent on, and I think that's for a good reason. I think that that there's a possibility that they knew this was going to happen. I believe that Right Stuff, Sean Kleckner, all of them, I believe they knew that this response was gonna happen. Nobody is happy about this. I mean, if you look at the replies, you have maybe one or two people that are trying to calm people down. A lot of the comments about censorship specifically, people are coming and saying, this is not censorship. Them not having sub for sale does not mean they're censoring things. I'm not gonna get into that argument right now, but everything else, it's really arguments you can't really argue with. People straight out saying, I don't like the idea that Sony themselves is becoming this big monopoly that's controlling everything anime related. And yes, the biggest concern that comes from that is what me and my brother have talked about to death on our podcast, which is gatekeeping. Monopoly often creates a gatekeeping aspect because they have control over everything, because they're the only place you can go to for your goods, they can choose what you get. And that's kind of what they did in the realm of Sony slash PlayStation's branch is because they had control over the gaming sphere for quite a while, they got to choose what people had. Now, Grand Nintendo's come in and said, hey, you can have it over here now, which was completely a 180 for them because they've always been the family friendly, nothing inappropriate on our platform. And now PlayStation is that. PlayStation is the one saying, well, if it doesn't fall within our wants, you can't have it. You can, you can have tons of violence. You can have people's heads getting exploded. You can have all this inappropriate stuff. You can have Last of Us 2 with a full-on scene of inappropriate happenings between two people. But if it's something else, if it's anime characters, no. None of that. But anyways, I am going on a tangent. One of the biggest discussions I've been having ever since this happened was both the delisting aspect and what does it mean for other publishers? Obviously you have Sony who is a big publisher, is a big licensor, now has control over one of the biggest anime related distributors out there besides Amazon. What happens to all these publishers? What happens now that they have essentially, in Sony's best interest, this place where they can select what goes in and out of those doors? That's the big question mark. You have companies like Discotech, Anime Ego, and yes, technically Sentai Filmworks themselves that utilized Right Stuff as their distribution company. Again, like I mentioned before, it made sense that F Sony bought Right Stuff Anime because they've always been the distributor for them. If you bought something from Funimation, it shipped from Right Stuff. If you bought something from Sentai Filmworks, it shipped from Right Stuff. So as Sony is standing here going, we bought these guys, they're our company, why are they shipping out stuff from our competitor? That's the big question mark that's coming up now. So it's not hard for a lot of people to believe that there could be some actions happening here in the near future that could lead people to believe that there's a little bit of shady business happening where Sony themselves is trying to hamper competition. It's trying to strong arm the competition. Right stuff, just the Sentai Filmworks page, has a lot more traffic than if you went to Sentai Filmworks website. So it's very easy to understand that at some point they could go, whoa, well, we don't really like you guys being on our platform anymore. Go away or do this. It's not hard for anybody to come to that conclusion. And I've had plenty of people in comments and, and DMs mention that same issue. Is Sony going to use this as a way of strong arming Sentai Filmworks to either stop or to become a part of them to force a buyout for a low price? Well. If you can't sell on a platform anymore, it doesn't mean you're really that important, are you? I guess we don't have to spend that much money to buy you. The biggest fear that I had, honestly, was the idea of them going, hmm, 
Got that new Peter Grill Blu-ray? Well, it's a little bit too inappropriate for us, better find somewhere else to sell it. But it could go even farther than that, saying, well, looks like you're buying up all these licenses, trying to compete with us, right? Looks like we're gonna have to cut you off. It's really hard to say at this point, honestly. I don't think we're gonna see anything happening for about the next year. I think this whole move early on for these delistings was specifically things that were, yes, H, like straight on H stuff. I can't say the other word because YouTube got really mad at my last video. <laughs> The obviously H stuff. But when does it come to the point where it's things that are in the middle ground there? To Love Rue, still listed, but how long? Things like Peter Grill, is still listed, but how long? Obviously, Interspecies Review is already off of there. They're gonna have to play in this really careful area because again, now that they're a part of Sony, Sony's gonna gatekeep exactly what hits that platform. Do I think that Sentai Filmworks is in a bad position? I don't really think so, honestly. You do have to keep in mind that Sentai Filmworks, Discotech, Amanami Ego, all those companies still have other distributors. Amazon. Amazon, the easily the biggest platform for anything sells, is still there for them. They still sell their stuff there. I think Amazon themselves have their own issues with keeping certain things out of their library, obviously, but they still are a big distributor for these companies. Somebody made an argument that, well, look, Right Stuff has insane sales. Everybody goes to Right Stuff. I don't really think so. I don't think Right Stuff really is that big. Yes, it was very much so for the fans. The fans went there because the sales were big, but keep in mind, sales aren't necessarily what these companies are going for. Because you have a big Sentai Filmworks sell on Right Stuff does not mean that's a good thing for Sentai Filmworks. Typically, a lot of companies, when they have big sales like that, it's because they're trying to get a massive amount of people to buy a massive amount of products for a low profit. So they still, in the end, make a big boost and they get rid of stock that they no longer want to have. But it's not necessarily a good thing. Sentai Filmworks wants to sell that Blu-ray for 60 bucks. They don't want to sell it for 12. 12 is probably just above their cost margin. And so if they do that too much, if they rely on that too much, they're never going to make money. You're talking them probably making like a buck each sell, and that's not good. They want you to buy it on Amazon technically so they can get that $60 mark. And yes, technically, I've had times where I went to Amazon, it's actually cheaper than Right Stuff when Right Stuff is not having a sell. And I think for a majority of the people that maybe watch one or two shows a season and they just want to buy that one show they really enjoy, they probably went to Amazon. They probably don't even know that Right Stuff exists. I think the majority of people, Amazon's really where they go. It's the diehard collectors that do this kind of stuff with their walls. Those are the people that love Right Stuff because again, they can buy massive amounts of stuff for really cheap cost. But I do believe in the end, outside of Amazon, I do believe that Sentai Filmworks, and if the case is the, with them as well, Anime Ego, I think Anime Ego ships most of their stuff from them, but I think for like mass production, they'll still send it to Right Stuff. And I think that's the same with Discotech. But these companies really, if they're if they're reliant too much on Right Stuff, they need to pull those rings back. They can still They can still list it there as much as they can, but they really need to set up a backup. Hopefully they would actually be told at some point, hey look, in three months, you guys need to be out of here. And that might be the case right now. Again, we have that year bracket where right stuff is not going to change. They're not going to change what they're doing. Besides get rid of the inappropriate stuff that we've talked about before. But I do believe after that year's over, you're going to start seeing a lot of stuff probably happen within right stuff. And I think that's not for the better. Again, technically with a lot of this feedback that we're getting right now with this announcement, all signs are pointing that right stuff is not going to be in a good state. I really do wonder what the masses really thinks about this. If the masses really don't even understand what's going on, but I think the diehard fans, and again, I think the ones that do go to write stuff and not to Amazon, they're really mad about this. And I really do wonder what is going through their minds right now. Again, did Sean Kleckner know this is going to happen? Does Right Stuff know this is going to happen? Is Right Stuff even seeing a hit by this? Is a lot of the people chirping about, I hate this. I don't like Sony having control of this stuff. I'll never buy things from Right Stuff again. Is it really people that do buy stuff or is it people that are just trying to make Right Stuff believe that they won't buy anymore? Me personally, I want to keep supporting Right Stuff. I love them. I love them as a company. I don't like the fact that they've been bought out, but I do still support them as a company. But it is very hard to going forward, knowing that whatever I buy is paying into a company that possibly in the future will start to delist companies that compete with them. I think right now, High Dive isn't really a threat to Sony. I think when Sony's looking at the seasonals, they're still getting like 30 plus shows. Yeah, right now with this last season or this current season, High Dive has like 15 of them. They are definitely trying to push as being a competitor. But do I think Sony sees them as a threat quite yet? I don't really think so. I think when you get to the point where it's similar to when they bought Crunchyroll, 
when you do have half of the shows themselves being between these two sources, that's when you're going to have Sony probably step in and go, hey, AMC, we want Sentai Filmworks. How much do you want for it? But do I think that Sony is going to be able to strong arm AMC by saying that you can no longer list your stuff on Right Stuff, which is this big company for selling anime? No. I don't think that's ever going to be the case. Because I don't think that AMC themselves or Sentai Filmworks really sees their physical distribution as a huge part of their company. Yes, it's some great money. They do get a lot of money through that because again, if they sell a Blu-ray for 60 bucks that cost them $10 to make, that's huge profits. But honestly, AMC, Sentai Filmworks, their main goal is licensing for streaming because streaming subscription is where the money's at. That's monthly them getting a certain amount of money from a lot of people versus the small minority of people that buy Blu-rays. But of course that goes back to what is AMC's goals in buying Sentai Filmworks? Is it to get into the anime market? Is it to bring the anime market into their portfolio because they see that Sony's getting into it and there's their money there? Disney's getting into it. Netflix got into it. Or is it what we joked about when this first thing happened with uh, AMC buying Sentai? Is it AMC wanting to build up this franchise because they hope that one day Sony will buy that for as much as they bought Crunchyroll? Do they see them buy Crunchyroll and go, hmm, let's get into this anime thing. See if we can get Sony to buy Sentai Filmworks. It really just depends on what AMC's goal is. And I've always seen AMC as being a big company about cons and stuff like that. I mean, they they get involved with the conventions all the time. I mean, I've seen that a lot with Walking Dead. And so I do believe they were in those cons and saying, man, people love anime. Let's get into anime. This seems to be something that's making money. Again, Sony is getting involved with it. In the end, again, it sucks. And I think I'm a little vindicated in the idea that there's so many other people that believe the same thing. Again, there's so many people saying, I'm just straight up boycotting. I'm not going to buy from Right Stuff ever again. And again, I do wonder what they're thinking about. I, From what I understand, this is a done deal. Now, there's a possibility that this is similar to when Sony bought Crunchyroll. It didn't happen immediately. It never happens immediately. Whenever a company, whenever somebody buys a company, it takes some time for things to be solidified. There has to be a lot of federal stuff that they have to get involved with in order to approve it to even happen. It's not just they walk into the front door and slap a check on the table and then they go, okay, there you go, there's the keys. It, it takes some time. And honestly, with the couple of the statements that Right Stuff has made, it's sort of making me believe that this isn't a 100% done deal. For one, they said nothing's really technically changing. It's gonna be the same way they're going for a current time. And we still are up in the air on what's happening with Nozomi Entertainment and all those other companies that are underneath Right Stuff. If they're still in talks with what's going on with those brands, that leads me to believe that they're still at the table right now trying to decide what all they're buying. So there still could be a possibility, and I'm just shooting this in, you know, just random assumption here. There's still a possibility that Right Stuff could pull out of this deal. But keep in mind that if they do, there's ramifications for doing that. But that's just my speculation. I don't know for sure what's done deal and what's not. I don't think that they're going to pull back on this whole thing. I'm, I'm for certain they knew this was going to happen. I am just positive that they knew this backlash was going to happen, like I said, because that's why they waited to announce it until after the big sale they had. They knew this was going to have a negative impact on their company, which again makes me believe that possibly there's something behind the scenes where Right Stuff maybe was hurting, and this was a deal they had to make in order to survive, which I think sucks because I wanted to support them as a small company, the small deal that was really standing outside of all the big companies. Again, it's like it's the death of the family business. It, it really felt like they were a family. They were for the fans, they were fans, and they were really out to support the fans and supply the fans with what they want. And now, again, we, are, we have all signs that this is not the case anymore, that they are now a gatekeeping company, just like Sony loves them to be. The changes are, are good and bad. I mean, it, if you have a large company coming in, they're not as focused on the fan necessarily as when you had a smaller group of fans that were running the organization, for example. Uh, it has become more of a business-centric uh, environment than it was previously. Anyways, that's my continued thoughts on what's going on with the Right Stuff buyout and what's going to happen with all these other companies. Again, if I, if anybody works at Sentai and Filmworks and stuff, I'm sure they're already, they're, they're already ahead of this whole thing, but I do hope they have a plan set because I don't think after about a year, I don't think that they're going to be able to be on that platform anymore. I think there's it's going to become a time where they're going to start getting kicked out. Technically, it already happened with the Crunchyroll platform. The moment that Sony bought them out, the whole deal that Sentai Filmworks had with putting their stuff on their platform went away. No more playing nice. <laughs>
<laughs> sadly. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know about this whole situation. As always, I definitely appreciate you guys' feedback. Additionally, if you've not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, and topics like this. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. This is probably going to get demonetized just like the last video, so I definitely appreciate everybody's support, and y'all take care.